Hello all and welcome. In the last video tutorial I showed you how you can set up Ubuntu Server 12.4 as a LAMP server and in this video I'll just be showing you how you can set it up with a static IP address so if you wanted to get your router set up with port forwarding so if anyone comes to your IP address then it will automatically point to your web server then it should work fine by default it will have a DHCP assigned IP address which means it gets it from your router so we're just going to be setting all that up for you so if you want to start your web server up and once it boots up correctly it will ask you to log in with your username and password which we set up in the last video and once that's ready we can log in so once we're in um, you can see from the screen we can see how much of our hard drive is used, the processes our current IP address on this machine is 10.0.0.162 um, how much memory we're using and the system load so the first thing we need to do is open up the network interface folder for the server. We can do this by typing sudo. Uh, one sec. We can do this by typing sudo nano, and then the location of the file, which is etc network interfaces. Right, what this does is the sudo bit means super user do. So what this is doing, it'll run it as an administrator. The next bit, which is nano, is telling it to open it with a specific text editor. And the next bit is the location of the file. So once you've done that, click enter and ask you for your administrative password. You'll notice that when you type in, it doesn't actually show you anything there, but just make sure you type it in correctly. And uh, now it should show you the file. Um, in here you should see something the same, if not very, very similar. We just need to go down to the bottom line, which is iFace F0 iNet DHCP. And we need to change to where it says DHCP to static on the next line. Um, so we'll press return after static. And uh, now we can press tab and then address. followed by the IP address we want for the machine. In this tutorial I'll be giving it the address of 10.0.0.150. You're going to need to make sure that the IP address you choose is unique to this machine. You don't want it to be in the standard pool for the IP addresses given out by your router and you don't want it to be something already used. So try and make it something obscure but make sure it fits in with the current network configuration. So for example if your router is on 192.168.0.1 and it's giving out IP addresses from 1 to 50 then you might want to give it a 192.168.0.200 address as long as it's below uh, as long as it's between um, 1 and 254 then you should be fine. So once you've done that, click return again on the tab key and now we type in net netmask. And in Windows terms it's just a subnetmask. And you type in two five five dot yeah two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. Enter and then tab again and this next bit is gateway followed by the IP address of your router. In this case it's 10.0.0.1 and once done that we have finished configuring the network configuration file. So to save that you have to do Control O and then click enter that saves the file and then we can exit it which is Control X the next thing we need to do is choose the DNS server for the computer to use. 
we now have to do this by typing sudo nano backslash etc backslash resolve conf forward slash yeah that is a forward slash sorry about that <laughs> I was saying the backslash um, either way you can see what I've typed so just make sure it's <laughs> the same as I've typed I apologise for being an idiot but anyway uh, slash <laughs> resolve dot conf dot d slash base and just to make sure um, I will put a link in the description where there will be pictures of everything and the code used so if you can't understand what I'm saying or I I make a few mistakes then you've, you've got something hard to actually look at instead of having to listen to me yabber on you might find that a bit easier should have mentioned that at the beginning of the video so you can have to listen to me waffle but anyway type that in and click enter again what that's going to do is it's going to say run this as an administrator open it with nano and it will show you the text file and um, the file itself is actually empty but in that we need to type in name server followed by the DNS address so in this video I'll just be using Google's DNS servers you can use the same IP address as your router if you've got a built in DNS server or if there's another DNS server you want to use then feel free to use that so the Google's DNS server is 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8 .8 .8 .8 and just to add another name server just in case that one's down then we can use another one of google's which is 8.8.8.4 and once you've done that you do control again to save it press enter and control x to exit now we've done that um, we've pretty much finished then the last thing we need to do is take down the ethernet interface and bring it back up again just so it reloads all the changes and we will then restart the um, DNS folder so that it knows where to look so to do that we need to type in sudo which again is super user do don't know if that's what it actually stands for but when I was learning it that's what I got told it did um, so yeah sudo and then if down and then eth0 which is and uh, click enter and then sudo again and then if up and then f0 again and that will just bring back the ethernet adapter interface back up and the last thing is sudo and then etc init dot d slash resolve com and then restart and that should have saved your changes uh, just to make sure it has we can type in ifconfig which in windows 10 um, is the same thing as ipconfig and we can see that the IP address is now 10.0.0.50 and that seems to look right. Um, just to test that, we can try pinging um, a website just to make sure it translates properly. So, to do that, we can type in ping, which is the same in Windows terms, and then the um, domain name we're going to be pinging. So, to do that, I'm just going to be pinging wilson18.com. And we can see it's translated it properly to the correct IP address and it works. To exit that, you can just do Control C. And again, just to make sure it, it still works after a reboot, um, we're going to be rebooting the server. And if you don't already know how you do that, then what you actually do is you type in sudo again and then reboot. the server should then reboot and then you should be able to log in again under the username and password we previously created uh, 
and you can see there the IP address is still the same which we changed it to and again we can try pinging if we want to so ping will also make t perhaps I'll type in right 18.com and it's still working so we've got that sorted in the next video I'll be showing you how we can actually install PHP my admin if you want to if you don't want to then feel free to skip the video um, PHP my admin is just a, a web interface it provides you with a web interface to talk to MySQL you might not need it, you might be pretty hardcore and all that, all that, but I find it quite useful just so you've got something to look at and it helps you out a bit in case you don't know any SQL. So thank you for watching. Again, I, I hope this video has been useful. Even if um, you've already known how you've done this, or if, if you don't know how you do it and you just want to learn a bit of or getting used to the code that uh, Ubuntu uses, or Linux for example, then it might, you might find it's a bit useful for that. So thank you for watching, please make sure that if, if this was helpful then please subscribe and like the video. If it wasn't then please comment below, if there's something you didn't understand then comment below and ask me a couple questions and hopefully I'll be able to help you out. And if you do like the video check out our website you'll find that there are a lot of other guides if you find out like this video didn't make much much sense and you can't really deal with the black screen you want a proper um, graphical user interface for it then I have also done a very very similar guide using just Ubuntu desktop version you might find that is a hell of a lot easier and again there's guides on there how you can do it so I hope this has helped, and I really hope to see you again in the next video. Thanks. Bye.